you crashed into a planet, you better consider not drinking and flying anymore. Booting, please wait. Hello I am your navigation system. Last destination is still selected. Center of the galaxy. Please leave the planet and follow the hyperspace beltway for five and a half light years. Why would you use an atlas, if you have a full and luxury navigation system like me? Hello viewers, hello gamers. Welcome to No Woman's Sky or No Argument One Sky. This, let call it a game, is a little project to test what can be done to create a procedural generated universe. But let's start with bits of backend stuff. I hope someone with the game can tell me how much data will be exactly transferred the moment you upload a discovery. Some tests showed it not very much so it cannot be every plant, animal and the excavate able recourse. So it has no sense to carve funny figures into the recourse bubbles because they won't be transferred. All data like position, rotation, destroy state and some other things multiplied by all the stuff on the planet would need multiple gigabytes to upload. Each data is only some bytes like position X, Y and Z each an integer number of 32 bits, so each 4 bytes. These 12 bytes multiplied by 1 million makes 12 megabytes suddenly. This is only the position data. And this is a very low estimate if the surface of a sphere with a radius of 8 kilometers, the measured size of the planets in the No Man's Sky Reddit, is split into 1 million parts the end is around 800 square meter. This is then a square of 28 meters between the resources in the game these objects are much tighter. If my math is wrong please comment below to discuss it. The uploaded data seen on a router is way lower than this. I would love to have the exact length of the upload. But what would I upload? All of the planets or star systems can be addressed with 64 bits. In software this is the data type long, also this number can be used as seed for a random generator to create every time the same star system. I would use this seed as primary key for my database table. Here is my little database I assume the seed on level of the star system. Here can also the uploader, the discoverer if it be saved. On the planet level the seed is now a foreign key to the star system and with the index of the planet part of the primary key. For all people without knowledge of database structure let me explain. The primary key is a unique identifier of a set of data. Every line in a table can address this way. A foreign key is a reference to other tables to avoid orphaned data. For example there can't be a planet without a star system. We see now only the seed with 64 bit is 8 bytes, add 200 bytes for usernames and 200 extra for planet names, we end by 408 bytes less than a half kilobyte. Then multiply this to the uploaded planet or plant we have 1 kilobyte upload. This is very small and contains all data to recreate the star system. With the displayed data in the router it looks close to the real uploaded data. But change to the next point. What time would I need to make a little bit of a procedural generated universe with some physics in it, like the promised hotter planets are closer to the star? The answer is around two week full time. The game is named No Woman Sky because the blog Jezebel wanted a game named like this. Let's create a character and color it. Choose a gender and a pronoun. There are no races, hashtag all aliens life matter. But enough of this mockery it's time to show the universe. I would play thus spoke Zarathustra here but Gemma would remove my video then. Okay it is not 3D but I have physics behind it. Let's show some star systems we can see here each planet got an own position around the star. The distance is split in three parts too hot in red, the habitable zone in green and the furthest away too cold zone in blue. Each planet can have a type randomized by the distance to the star, molten, half-molten, rocky and desert. Molten planets are more common in the first quarter of the hot zone as in the last quarter. In the other way around the desert planet is more common on the end of the hot zone. The habitable zone is split in five parts with desert, ocean, earth-like, cold and city planets in it. City planets are rare with only 1% chance to exist. The desert and cold planets are more common on the each end of this zone. In the two cold zone we have three parts one with cold and ice planets, 
the middle part is for gas giants mostly reserved and the end is for rock planets. Each planet got an individual size in the debug star system we have six planets four rocks and two cold planets for example. Let's land on a planet. Here all titles of the planet are randomized without more sense for now. The one big thing is I cannot change lots of the generator, because each change moves a lot of star systems of change all of the planets in the star system. For No Man's Sky I bet we will not see any big content updates because it would change all of the existing planets. Make a little example. We name a rabbit on a red desert planet, Fire Red Bunny. After a small change this bunny is now a T-Rex on a jungle planet. The name won't fit anymore like all data. Maybe the now generated planet is now a lifeless planet and then there aren't any animals there. I had to search for city planets each time I changed a bit. If I had a lots of data saved I had to wipe it after a massive change. Image this on no man's sky all data wiped by an update. People would go mad by this. No one likes to lose all progress. Let's fly to the next galaxy and end the video there. If you want a description of the planet creation or other details of this creation write in the comment section. Jumping to next galaxy. Please wait a short moment. The next galaxy got the name Kukul's Navd. Please drive on the right lane and leave at the next exit. Turn half left on the next star. You reached the center of the universe. Your body begins to dissolve in the darkness in front of you. And you begin to understand the truth. And I will share the truth with you. Never pre-order.